Hello again, this is Becca going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online, back for another week of Linden scripting language. I don't have a freebie for you this week either. I was just going to continue with the suggestion box we created last week. We're going to add a little bit of functionality to it. This time we're going to make it clear itself out after it's given you the note cards that we set it up to give you last week. And we're also going to set it up to automatically filter content so that it can't receive something that it's not set up to give you. All things that just make it a little easier to use and teach you a few new functions in SL. So here we are again. Same suggestion box as last time. Still has the suggestion 1, 2, and 3 note cards. As you should remember, the box will not allow more than one object to have the same name. So it automatically adds or appends that number to any note card that didn't have its name changed. So if we look back in here, we already have the debug true. That's good. Testing is false. That was a flag that let it interact with us as though we were not the one that owned it so that we could see how it would treat everyone else. So those are exactly where we need them to be. So the first thing that we are going to do is go in here. After it gives the inventory, we're going to create a new for loop. For i equals 0 again. And then i is less than. We're going to we can't go through and use uh, the count of the cards like we did last time because that would still turn up the suggestion, original suggestion card. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to make sure it's by the number of items on the notes list. So, that's a new command. Get list length notes and i equals i plus one. Close that up there. Now, in order to make them go away, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we scan this so we know that it's going to work correctly. So just as before, we're going to create a string this, only this time it will equal list to string. And that list is again the notes list. And the spot on that list is i. If debug, owner say, note card to delete, number plus string i plus is, close it out, plus and since it's already a string, we don't need to add anything else. This. That's enough to run a quick test. So we're going to close that out. Oop, typo. There we go. Close that. Open my chat. Accept. Note card to delete. Zero is suggestion one, one is suggestion two, two is suggestion three. Easy enough. Now we know what it will produce, so we can safely add the next command. Remove inventory. This. Now I can't, oh yeah, I can. I right click and choose touch. Accept. And that cleared them out. That easy. Realistically, if you emptied a suggestion box, it would clear itself out. This does the same thing. So it causes your virtual world to carry over some of the convenience of the real world. But this right now has one of the inconveniences of the real world. 
it's not restricted to just note cards you can shove in there. You can shove pretty much anything in there. Let's see, this is a little something I'm working on. Drop that in there. Find a gesture. Drop that in there. And let's grab a animation. Drop that in there. You see? Now we've got all these other things in there that don't really belong in it. Whoops. I want to open. All these things that don't really belong in it. What are we going to do? Well, right now we're going to manually delete them. But that's horribly inconvenient. You don't want to have to go in and manually clean something out you're designing to be automatic. Plus, if you're not going to be looking at any other stuff people put in there, how do they necessarily know? Maybe they think it was important and that you're going to look at it. So we're going to set up something to deal with that. Changed it means anything about this object has changed. This can be that it teleported from one region to another. For example, if you have an attachment that you want to trigger something when you teleport, that goes under changed. You want to scan the situation if pieces are added or removed, that goes under changed. You need to have an integer to hold the type of change. So that integer is change. You can actually call it anything that's not a restricted word. Changed with a D is restricted. Changed without a D is not. Easy enough. If change equals changed underscore inventory. Actually, here's another thing to learn. Because we're going to just have one thing here, we actually say if changed does not changed equals inventory. Everything that we're going to do is going to fall under here. There is another way to do that, though. We could say if change does not equal inventory return. This will just tell it to ignore anything but a change in inventory. Simple. The saying return if change does not equal changed inventory is the same thing as saying if change equals equals inventory then do everything in the brackets. This is just a way to do that without brackets. Same thing. If get inventory number, which you remember from up here, get inventory number, only this time it's not going to be note card, it's object is greater than zero. Remove. Sorry, that's the thing we're going to do. We're actually going to do two things. Remove inventory get inventory name inventory object zero. That tells it to scan itself, find the first piece of inventory of type object and remove it. Because it's finding you remove inventory by name, this gets the name of the first inventory of type object. Say zero this suggestion box cannot accept that kind that item. That will make it a pretty universal thing so we don't have to change it. Now there are a lot of different types of inventory so we're actually going to do this a few times. 
and because we're going to do that a few times, we should put an else. That's more efficient in the scripting engine. So inventory sound. So any sound files in SL will automatically be rejected. Inventory texture. Inventory gesture. Inventory landmark. All right. Now, anytime that it encounters one of these inventory types that is very pointedly not a note card, it will automatically delete the item. And then it will say, the suggestion box cannot accept that item. Now you may notice we don't have type script in here. And you may have wondered how we were going to go through and make sure that it, if it detects an added script, that it will eliminate that script. Well, the reason we're not doing that is because the command we use to allow people to drop things in here, allow inventory drop true, will not allow it to drop a script. As I mentioned last week, that door was closed before we ever got here. So these are the types that you'd need to worry about. I may have forgotten one, but it still tells you how to do it. Any of these you see on the wiki for get inventory name, that type, every one of those, you can just put something in here for those. Now, why didn't I go through and set it up like I did up here with the if it does not equal if get inventory number, you can't make that work. Why? This has to be a, a simple thing. If this is true, then we're going to do this. It has to have only one option. And I can't set a get inventory number for note cards and have that rule out anything else. If I went through and tried to say anything about get inventory note card, all that will do is tell us if the number of note cards changed. I can't filter the changed inventory to know what type. So we have to use these. These automatically search, was it an object? Was it a sound? Was it a texture? Was it a gesture? Was it a landmark? It goes through each of these options and then removes that piece of inventory. In this case, the long-winded approach is the only approach. Ah, that's what I did wrong. Whoa. That has to be defined as an integer. We talked about as an... And there's one other little problem. This is an easy mistake to make when you're dealing with the parentheses like this. You have an open parentheses here, an open one here, a closed one here. You had to close the other one. This parenthesis closed this. It finished the arguments for get inventory name. I had to add this one to close the option for get inventory. It's easy to miss. It's easy to forget. Congratulations if you caught it. Because that kind of thing can screw you up every time. And now... If I were to go through, drop that in there. What did I do wrong? It caught suggestion box cannot accept that item, but it was not able to remove it. animation.
I didn't set one up for animation. We see where I got this wrong. Yep, I see what I got wrong. I didn't copy that down there. Of course, this has to be changed to landmark, and this to animation. Congratulations, we've come across the first thing that I can't easily edit out. Because I'd have to go back and edit way too much to make that succinct, if I did. So, now with that fixed, remove that one. Yep, there it goes. Automatically removes animations. Let's try an object. Automatically removes objects. Landmark. Automatically removes landmarks. There you go. That's how you filter for your inventory types. Complete with a little example of programmer mistake, but easy enough to catch and how you automatically clear the inventory out even after you've put in the things you want. Thanks for coming back. This has been Becca, often going by Nightcat or Nightcat's Meow when online. And this has been another lesson on Linden scripting language in the virtual world of Second Life. We hope to see you again next week. I'll be continuing to release these videos every Tuesday at noon. Till then, take care and happy programming.